calculate a confidence interval estimate of a population proportion. So using formulas. These are the formulas for a population proportion, uh, confidence interval. So um, E, we didn't talk about yet. E is called a margin of error. Margin. Get so good. Um, all right, whatever. Margin of error. And this is basically a formula. Um, it varies depending on what type of confidence interval you want to find. Right now we're finding it for a P, so therefore it's going to stay consistent to that. Obviously you need your critical value to find it. You need a sample size. P hat, so let me uh, define some of these variables. P hat, um, sorry, I'll use white again because it's a little better to see. Okay. Why is it doing? All right, P hat is your sample proportion. Q hat is the complement of P hat, one minus P hat. You know, if you recall from before you did like um, probability of success. And so P hat is kind of like the probability of success and Q hat is like the probability of failure, if you recall. Um, e is your margin of error. P is your population proportion. Um, and that's it. Now, it looks way worse than it is. All, well, and then obviously Z of alpha over 2 is your critical value, right? C, V. Um, Sorry, is it a Q or an A? Huh? This is a Q, right? Q is equal... Q hat. Um, Q hat. Okay. Yeah, this is a Q hat. Yeah, is the complement of P hat. Q with a little, we say P hat, Q hat. That's how we say it out loud. All right, so um, as long as you can find these pieces, it's cake. You just plug it into a formula, not a big deal. You guys have seen this notation before, less than, less than. So P is between whatever this value is and this value. So this is going to give you a range of numbers which you could represent in interval notation, that's what, this, oh, that's what this is, or as a point estimate plus or minus your margin of error. There's three different ways you could represent the same thing. That's just what this means. And then this is how you calculate your margin of error. Showing the formula. Here's an example. In a study, so you're going to see a lot of word problems now. All word problems, basically. The idea is what kind of confidence interval you're finding. Is it for a proportion? Is it for a mean? Is it for a standard deviation? What is it? If it is a proportion, find the notation. What's n? What's p hat? What's q hat? Find the little pieces that you need. How do I know? Well, let's see. In a study of uh, 1,228 randomly selected medical malpractice lawsuits. Oh, that sounds like a n. n is a sample size. It was found that 856 of them were dropped or dismissed. That sounds like a piece of a total. Now X, if you recall before, represented the number of successes. So X is going to represent that again. And the number of successes was 856, where successes was, you know, dropped or dismissed. I'm just going to say dropped, okay? Well, dropped or dismissed. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write that every time. So I know that a part of a total was dropped or dismissed. Therefore, I'm talking about a piece of a total or a percentage or a proportion. P hat is a sample proportion. From this sample, what proportion were dropped or dismissed? P hat is number of successes over total, 856 out of 1228 is my P hat. Now, we're going to typically represent that in decimal form, 856 out of, you guys do that too, what is that, 1228, is what decimal? 0.6971, so approximately 0 0.6971. And I like to take at least four digits to the right of the decimal. You can even take more if you want, because you're going to use this, obviously, to plug it into a formula to find something else. Right? So I read this and I said, in a study of this sample, this many people had, you know, a success, which in this case is dropped or dismissed. So I automatically know I'm dealing with a proportion of something. Find my proportion. 
Construct A, ah, 95% confidence interval. The confidence level is 95%, which means alpha automatically is the complement of that, or 0 0.05. They gave me what confidence interval they want. I got the confidence level. Automatically, that gave me alpha. Look at that. Two, not even two full sentences gave me all this. Got to learn how to pull the pieces out. Find the confidence interval uh, for a proportion. It tells you what you want. Find a confidence interval for a proportion of medical malpractices, uh, malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed. Now, use this sample to see what happens for the population. You know, let's say out of all of the population of um, medical malpractice lawsuits, approximately what percentage of them are dropped or dismissed based on looking at this sample. I'm using this sample to approximate something for the population and we're going to be 95% confident in my result and it's going to be an interval of numbers. Let's calculate it. So, aha, formula. Well, let's find our margin of error first, but to calculate this, all right, let's see what I need. I have p hat, right? I determined p hat. Which means, oh, q hat I need, right? But q hat is easy because q hat is always 1 minus p hat. And I have p hat. 1 minus 0 0.6971. Now I'm literally, I'm literally just like following a formula. 1 minus 0 0.6971. Once I find the pieces, this is just like robotic. 0 0.3029, approximately. 0 0.3029. What else do I need? Um, let me see. I need n. I have n. Ah, I need a critical value. I need a critical value. I need z of alpha over 2. Okay, well, let's do alpha over 2. Alpha is 0 0.05. So alpha is 0 0.05 over 2, which is 0 0.025. I'll give you guys a chance to calculate that if you want. So I want this critical value of z of 0 0.025. Now I'll draw my picture and everything like that just to show you, but you know, you're going to get to the point where it's repetitive, right? It's a z-score, blah, blah, blah. My critical value here, we just did two of them. It's the same idea. I'm on an SND curve because the critical value here is a z-score. I want the z-score down here that has this area of 0 0.025 in the right tail. That's what this notation means. We did that before. I just did this twice, let's do it again. Let me share my screen. I want a z-score, I have an area. What do I do? Inverse norm, second, bars, inverse norm. The area in the left tail, I'm given the area to the right, so I'm gonna just do one minus area to the right. Mean is zero, standard deviation is one because I'm on an SMD curve, right? I just did this twice. Enter, enter, 1.96 when I round this, okay, 1.96. Again, this is a very typical critical value. You're going to see it multiple times. If I see for a proportion a 95% confidence level, I know to expect a critical value of 1.96. This is our first time calculating it. What else do I need, right? I'm literally looking at the formula going, what do I need? Got this, got this, got this, got this. Okay, now I can find E. Plug and chug. It says that E is equal to the critical value. Actually, let me write down the formula first. P hat, Q hat over N. This is the formula, right, that's given to you. You guys don't have to memorize formulas. I found the critical value, 1.96, times the square root of P hat we have, 0 0.6971, times Q hat we have, 0 0.3029. I'm literally just plugging it into the formula that is in front of me, divided by n, which we have 1228. This is literally just a calculated thing now. Um, so let's see what that is. So be careful with your order of operations. Um, I'm going to go in here first and do my under square root first. Do that. And then kind of like work my way out. So 0.6971 times um, 0.3029. Enter. 
Then I want to divide that by 1228. Right? Enter. You see this A and S, it just pulls up the last answer. I want the square root of this. Right? That's what my formula says. Take the square root of whatever you got there. So now I'm going to take the square root. So second, here's where square root is. But I want to pull up this last result. So you see on top of your negative sign is A and S. That's going to pull up my last answer. So second, negative. So I want to take the square root of the last result. That's what I'm doing. Enter. And this is just my method. I'm just working because I don't want to mess up my order of operations. So I just found this. <clears throat> and then I just have to multiply it by my critical value. 1.96. Enter. This is my margin of error. 0 0.0257. And I'm going to take four digits. 0 0.0257. Okay. So, approximately 0 0.0257. So my margin of error is approximately 0 0.0257. I'm not done, because this is not a confidence interval. This is a confidence interval. But I had to go through a critical value. I had to go find these. I had to find a margin of error to go and find the confidence interval. Now I have to plug and chug here. So I'm going uh, to write it out. My confidence interval. Here's my confidence interval. P hat minus E as the lower end of my interval, and p hat plus e is the high end of my interval. And my population proportion for this is going to be somewhere in the middle. p hat I have, 0.6971, minus my margin of error I just calculated, 0.0257. So I just subtract them on the left and add them on the right. Right, plus. And now I'm going to have an interval of numbers for my population proportion, 0.6971 minus 0.0257. I get 0.6714 on the low end, 0.6714. And then I'm going to add the two, 0.6971 plus um, 0 0.0257, and I get 0 0.7228, 0 0.7228, and this is my confidence interval. Um, now, ooh, one second, let me plug in my computer. Oh, yeah. I'm not, you know, technically done. These are the numbers. What do they mean? I have to interpret it, right? You're going to be asked to now interpret. After I calculate all that stuff, what does it mean? Interpret it now. And the interpretation is even repetitive, okay? It's basically going to sound the same every time, but you're just going to have to change it depending on, like, the situation. So, um, oops, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> we say we are. What is my confidence level? It was 95%. We are 95% confident that the true value of um, a true value for the proportion. Now, how do I know what I'm doing again? I go back to my word problem. What is the true value for the proportion of medical malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed for the proportion of all medical malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed is between, and I could represent this as a percentage because a proportion is a percentage also, is between 67.14% and 72.28%. So we can say 95% confident that between 67.14% and 72.28% of all medical malpractice lawsuits are dropped or dismissed. 
And I would say that's the majority, right? That most of them are dropped or dismissed. <clears throat> so we just found a confidence interval for a population proportion, okay, using the formula for it, going through all the process. Um, and this is what it was for this situation. So I used a sample to determine something for a population called a confidence interval. There's an interval of numbers that represents the population for this particular type of situation.